Ruby on Rails is a web application framework used by tons of sites on the net, like Twitter, Hulu, Get Satisfaction, Basecamp, and many more. In this chapter, we're going to show you how to get started developing on Ruby on Rails. Ruby is a programming language. It's the basis of the Ruby on Rails framework. This chapter, I will not be going in depth on the details of the language, so if you're totally unfamiliar with Ruby, I recommend you check out the Ruby videos from ThinkVidemin membership. Now, I will be explaining little parts of the language as we go along, but this is by no means an in-depth tutorial on Ruby. Rails, however, is a framework or a set of tools built in Ruby that allow you to build web applications quickly without having to worry about subtleties of things like HTTP servers. The version of Rails we're going to be using is version 3. Now, Rails focuses on a few core ideas, like rapid development. Rails allows us to have a rough version of our application running in just a few minutes. From there, you can iterate and improve on your code to create the functionality and the interfaces that you ultimately want to have. And the ability to iterate quickly allows you to make sure that you're on the right track in your development. Convention over configuration. Rails is designed to get you up and running quickly, so in almost any situation there is a convention for naming parts of your code, or where you put your files, or just the general structure of your code. You can always override the defaults when the conventions and defaults aren't ideal, but having the defaults there makes it easy to get up and running in your web application quickly. Additionally, since there are so many conventions and defaults, most Rails applications follow a similar pattern of development. This means that you can jump around from project to project, or even jump into an existing Rails project, and already pretty much have a good idea of where all the code is going to be. Testing. Now, testing is built right into Rails and everything it does. It not only provides a full test suite, but the option of several excellent other test suites that work equally well. Anytime that you generate code, test code is also generated right along with it. And there are a lot of great tools that allow you to do things like test-driven development, in which you write your tests first and build your application to meet those test criteria. When we want to get Rails installed, the first thing we need to have is Ruby. Now you can see how to get Ruby and Ruby Gems installed by watching the Getting Started and Ruby Gems video of the Ruby course on Think Vitamin membership. We're going to be installing Ruby version 3. Now at the time of this video, it's still a release candidate version. That means we'll have to make one minor change when we're actually installing it. Now Rails 3 requires Ruby 1.8.7 or better, or Ruby 1.9. Now you can check your Ruby version by typing in Ruby-V and checking the output. So here I'm running on Ruby 1.8.7. The next thing we want to do is install Rails. So just like when we install any other gem, we'll just type gem install Rails. And since right now it's still a pre-release version to get 3.0, what we're going to do is add the dash dash pre. Now when Rails 3.0 becomes a stable version, you'll no longer need the pre. Now, based on the code that you already have installed, this list of gems that are installed may be longer or shorter. And we can test that we have Rails installed by typing in Rails-V. So you can see we have Rails 3.0.0.rc, meaning release candidate. Now, you can keep up to date on Rails by going to rubyonrails.org, and it'll show you the current version as well as specific instructions for downloading onto your system. Now for documentation, there are a couple of different options. You can visit api.rubyonrails.org, which is the default API's page for everything in Rails. Now, it's a pretty good system. It certainly has all of the documentation you'll need, but it's a little bit uh, disorganized for my liking. A tool that I like to use is called railsapi.com. You can either download it for local use or browse the online version. Now right now I'm on the Rails 3.0 release candidate site, so if I were to browse online, we get this nice little interface here. Now it has all the same content, but the layout is different in that you get this nice live search here where you can type in the name of a method or a class, and it'll search it for you instantly, and you can see all the same documentation. Now it's all the same documentation, but I find that Rails API is a more discoverable and easier to use than api.rubyonrails.org. Another popular option is apidoc.com slash rails, and of course this has the same documentation but a couple other nice features. Now it doesn't have the big list of classes and methods, but it does have a live search, so we could type in validates, and sometimes it doesn't quite find the one you're looking for immediately. 
So just hit enter. And it takes us to the page, and you can see that it has all the same documentations. Some other nice things about it is that it gives you a history of the particular methods. You can see this was introduced in Rails 3.0. Other methods you'll be able to see its availability in previous versions, which is nice, as well as the ability for people to comment and leave extra information on the methods, which is really handy. So between these three tools, you should have some great documentation for reference when working with Rails. In the next video, we're going to start building our first Ruby on Rails application.